All right, what's going on, y'all? SBN Lifestyle here again. This video is for, and anyone can watch the video. It doesn't matter, you know, who watches the video. Anybody can watch stuff to gain knowledge. You know, there's knowledge everywhere in our world. But this video is more for musicians, artists, and people that create stuff. So I'm just going to be talking about, like, today... There's so much stuff to work with. And I think a lot of artists and musicians, we are getting this idea that the more we have, the better we're going to create or the more we're going to create or the more talented we're going to be. And let me tell you, it does not work like that. You know, I... Like this guy's channel, Lifted Noise. Uh, his name's Raul. He makes videos where he talks about the machines and he makes beats. He actually makes the beats. You know, he doesn't do all this technical talking and like a lot of these other artists and musicians. That's all they do is they talk about the equipment and they say about how great it is, but then they never make music with it. So what's the point of having it if you're not going to make music with it? You know, I have a Roland JDXI right here next to me, and it only has a hundred some sounds on it. It got 400 some drum sounds all together. And you know, that is a lot when you think about it, but over time, you know, you're using the same sounds over and over. But listen, that is a good thing when you use the same sounds over and over because you start to see how they fit together and how they sound good together. And I've been using this machine for almost three years and it's about the only thing that I use. I don't even use FL Studio anymore. You know, I got a lot of beats in there, but I'm just not a computer guy at all. I'm a full-blown, standalone, hardware, synth drum machine gear attic kind of guy and I cannot get enough of these machines and these musicians and artists we think that we need so much to create with listen you would be shocked what you can do with four parts four tracks I got four tracks to work with and if I send those four tracks off of my Roland JDXI onto my boss RC505 loop station, I get five tracks. I get one extra track. And let me tell you, I can make a whole song with those five tracks. The songs that you hear on my channel here, I made those songs with five tracks. The drum track, the analog track, and the two digital tracks. One digital, one digital, one drum, one analog, and then if I use my loop station, I got one extra slot to use if I record into that. But you do not need a thousand sounds to make something great with. I'm telling you, you don't. And you haven't even heard, you know, one one hundredth of my music. I haven't even uh, touched the layer i haven't even touched the surface you know i'm still underground way underground i haven't even got to the uh i haven't even melted the tip of the iceberg yet so to speak and this is what i hear going around all the time on these channels is that you need uh to eq and you need to compress your sounds and put reverb and delay and all this yes those things help they are there to help your sound be fuller and clearer and more punchy and sound a little better. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to drown your sounds and your music with reverb and delay and compression and EQ and all that. Those are tools to help when you are done with your mix, you see. See, a lot of people, they don't want to take the time to mix properly. They don't want to get their velocities right. 
and they don't want to get their kick and their snare and their hi-hat and their sound effects and their stabs, their orchestral stabs and their strings and their analog and their bass. You know, it takes time to make a great mix. You know, it just doesn't happen like that. You know, these guys that are making beats in like 15, 20 minutes and stuff, most of the time, yes, they might make a decent beat, but it's not finished. It's not finished unless they have really good sounds and they've been doing this for years, then yes, I can see them doing that. But somebody that's just starting, this is for people that are just starting or are, uh, I don't want to call you mediocre, but you know, you're just starting or you're a little more than that. You've been doing this for a couple months or a couple years. You know, the guys and the ladies that have been making music a while, you kind of have a feel what things, how you want them to sound. Everyone is going to have a different mix. It's not going to sound the same. And this is what I mean by technical talk. You know, these guys, they all tell you that you should do it this way. You should EQ the, the low pass filter. Take the low pass off of your vocals and put a high pass on this thing and all that. I don't even EQ my beats most of the time and they sound great like they are. Now they're not gonna sound like some professional studio where they mastered it after I mixed it, but if you make a great mix, you would be shocked and surprised what you can get with a great mix and not even having to do mastering or having to have another man or woman engineer work on your beat if you take the time. I'm telling you, it's we have this concept in our head that we need this good gear and we need better sounds and stuff. Yes, it's nice to have better sounds and to use better sounds, but you can take these mediocre sounds and you can shape and mold them to how you want them to sound. If you're willing to go into the menu and dive into the menu, take a leap into the menu, there's parameters in there that people don't even know about most of the time because they're too lazy to put in the effort and the work to make their own sounds be their own. You know, that's what I do with every single beat and song that I make, I put my own touch and twist to it. I never use a sound that's just how the sound is raw in its raw form. I always change the attack, the decay. I put a little bit of reverb or delay or compression and I go into the menu. I change the modulation. I do a bunch of things, change the filters, all kinds of stuff. There's so many things that you can do with this. I look at it like this. I look at music like ecosystems and galaxies because there are ecosystems and galaxies of possibilities with music. And people just, they say, oh, these sounds are, they're, they're mediocre sounds, so I'm not going to use them. I'm looking for the greatest sounds ever before I start making music. You know, oh, these drums, they don't hit hard enough. You know, oh, the percussion's not how I want it, so I'm not going to do anything or put no effort as a musician into it. And that's the wrong attitude to go into making music. Every time I get on one of these machines, I say, I'm going to make a masterpiece here. I'm going to make something that no one would have ever thought that I could have made on this machine. And I told Raul from uh, Lifted Noise, I wrote in a paragraph, I said, I'm going to make history with the Roland JDXI. See, and when I said that, I'm not boasting, but there's very, very few people that are just using one piece of equipment and they're making their beats on there and they're doing everything on the standalone machine itself. You know, everybody goes to the computer or the software or something else, you know, 
a, a digital audio workstation or something else. You know, they always go to something else. I'm looking to do something great with the machine alone. You know, just the machine. I don't want to use anything else. And the only thing that I would be maybe that would be helping me a little is the Boss RC505 that has the EQ and the compression and stuff. But I don't even hardly use EQ and stuff. I use compression and reverb a little bit. I don't use a lot. You don't have to use a lot when you are about to master if you make a great mix to begin with. And if you have better sounds, yes, that does help a lot. It helps a lot when you have better sounds. Because I hear uh, Bolo, the producer, Lifted Noise. Uh, there's another guy I'm subscribed to. Forgive me, I don't know his name. These guys, they have sounds that are really, really great, and they know how to sample. And uh, Bolo, the producer, he was using a Roland FA-06, and this thing sounds phenomenal. I mean, it sounds so good to my ear. He didn't even have to do nothing. He just made a riff, a melody, and put the drums, you know, the little... He just put that to it and it sounded like better than things that I make when I put, you know, hours into it because I don't have as great of sounds. I have some decent sounds on the Roland JDXI for how little the synth is and you can get some really good drum sounds and synth and analog sounds out of this thing. And these ain't even my type of sounds. That's what I'm saying. If I had my type of sounds, then I, my stuff would be two or three times better. You know, what you're hearing in my songs that I put out on my channel here, you know, SBN Lifestyle, I, then I got the name of the song, It's All On Me, produced by somebody but nobody, Natural Nate, if you're interested in watching them. You know, those are unedited, uncut videos. Those are just me putting out the beginning effort you know I didn't even uh, do what I really want to do with it you know I didn't even master it so to speak but I don't look to music as I have to master it I start out doing it good I start out with using the velocities right you know like the hi-hat this is an example of velocity if you don't know what velocity is if you pick a hi-hat that goes tss, 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 tss. this is velocity it goes up and down with the volume you know it goes from 76 to 96 to 23 to 50 whatever 1 to 27 and you know if we would learn to use velocities in our beats more it would make them better and panning, not too much panning though. I don't recommend too much panning at all. For anybody that makes beats, and if any of y'all are watching this that is subscribed, or if Lifted Noise or Bolo the Producer or any other musicians watch my video, I wouldn't recommend panning too much. I think it thins out mixes and it makes them sound like they're far away or they're all scattered out. I like when the sound is like right here, you know what I mean? Like it's it's here and a little bit outside. I don't like when it's all over the place. I don't like that sound. And I know a lot of these professional, professional producers, you know, they constantly are telling you how to make music and how to EQ and how to compress right and all this. You have to go by ear and learn this stuff yourself. You can only teach yourself music. And listen, I'm going to end with this. And I know a lot of you, you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this. But screw music theory. Music theory is complete bullcrap to me. 
if you're like me and you've been listening to music since you were younger, I don't even know how to play an instrument, y'all. I don't even know what an F flat or an E sharp is on the keyboard. I couldn't even tell you right now. But I put my hands on the keyboard and I just keep messing around and I keep messing around and I keep messing around until I get a melody that I really like and that I know is decent. You know, that's how I do it. And I always did it. I go in with a new and fresh attitude every time. You know, I don't want to know how to play an instrument. I don't want to know how to play what I'm going to play before I play it. It takes the fun and the excitement out of me making music. And that's why I tell you, after years of hearing sound, I know what I'm going for. I know what I'm going for. And you got to train your own ears and your own fingers to hit your velocity keys the way that you want to hit it. It ain't going to come in a couple weeks, man. This stuff takes years. This stuff takes a long time. And this whole music theory thing, you don't need music theory. You just need to practice what you're doing. Or if you love your craft, you're going to put in the work and the and and uh, the energy and everything into it. If you really love what you're doing, you're going to put the time and the effort into it. You know, if if you got to force yourself to do this, then stop. Don't don't even keep going with it. If you have to force yourself that is not the right thing to be doing if you're forcing yourself to make music. I don't have to force myself, you know, and I'm not bragging, I'm not boasting, but I get on these standalone machines and I look at these things like they are ecosystems of possibilities and inspiration and galaxies of different ways that I can shape the tones and make it sound different and put the attack and the, the, the decay and the sustain and the release and the filters and the modulation and the sound effects and the wobbly sounds, the strings, the orchestra, the Halloween scary type sounds, the jingly merry sounds. You know, there's so much in this one thing and you can take a couple sounds. You can take four sounds four tracks and you can get something that you would never think possible and see this is where i'm doing this because i want to inspire y'all to make better music i want to inspire people to make better stuff you know and i don't mean to down anyone but what i'm hearing today i'm just really not feeling and liking you know for me and i know a lot of other people ain't neither the message is trash. You know, what are we really talking about here, y'all? You know, th really think about it. You know, when you do something, do it different and unique from everybody. You know, ain't you tired of talking about money and material stuff and, you know, talking about how you screwed 10 girls in a month and all this stuff like I don't want to hear stuff like that. I want to, if you talk about, you know, you bit into a hard apple and drank a Snapple and got into a grapple, but I didn't want to fight. I looked into the day, I realized I was here, then all of a sudden it turned into night. You know, if you do, just go off of your senses, you know, just do what you do when you do it and be creative. Stop trying to be like everybody else and doing what everybody else is doing because people are not interested. Like people like me that have been doing this for a while, that doesn't interest us. That's old school. That's graveyard stuff to us. And that's why I'm just giving a shout out to this guy, you know, uh, Lifted Noise, Raul. He's a real down to earth guy and his channel, you know, he... He's one of the few that he dives into these machines and he shows you how they work. And Bolo, the producer, he's another one that he actually shows you what to do and he does it. He doesn't just talk about it. He doesn't talk the talk. He walks the walk. So thanks, you guys, for your channel. Um, stay inspired. And the inspiration 
Freedom and inspiration is one of the most important things in life, is to be free and to be inspired and to live our natural way that we are and not to be something that we're not, you know? So that's my message on this. I got a lot more music and a lot more stuff on the way. You know, I'm just getting warmed up here, y'all. So stay tuned. I appreciate you joining my channel here. Uh, subscribe if you like. Hit the like. If you hit the bell, hit all so you can be notified of all my uploads. If you hit the personalized, I don't think you'll get uh, all my uploads. So thank you. I appreciate every one of y'all. SBN Lifestyle. Somebody but nobody. Later.